guys, I'm joined today by Ollie of Husky Events. Uh, Husky Events run, well, some amazing nights, I suppose, across the, the, the South. <laughs> but got a, I understand you, guy, you come from quite an interesting background. Yeah. We'll, we'll go into that a bit later. But yeah, how do we sort of get here today? Well, uh, yes, yeah, kind of the events industry itself was never really something that I was ever sort of planning on going into. Um, when I was, I came to uni in Brighton, I came to Sussex Uni. Um, originally, my sort of focus was wanting to go into law. Uh, originally, wanted to be a police officer, and then kind of went down the route of wanting to go and you know become a solicitor. So, mm. went to Sussex Uni as just to study a law degree. But as the sort of time progressed, I was kind of feeling that it wasn't really the route for me. Um, now, sort of when I went to uni that first year, two thousand and seven, it was when sort of Facebook wasn't it wasn't huge sure it wasn't massive um it wasn't like it is today anyway so you know these days you see million and one facebook groups pop up for you know universities or what have you back then there wasn't really that sort of thing and when i was a lot younger i wasn't really the most outgoing person ever um you know still really sociable but you know i wasn't as probably wasn't as confident as i sort of i am now um and for me it was I went to unions so like well how can i meet as many people as possible and then I kind of harnessed the Facebook side of things. So sort of created loads of groups, sort of got to know a load of different people. And it kind of just, that sort of grew from there. Um, and then I kind of sort of fell into the event side off the back of it. So there was a student night that ran in Brighton in 2007. It was uh, called Carnage UK, it was a student bar crawl. Right. So I went on that in my first year, uh, my first term and thought this is like, this was wicked. I was really good. And three o'clock in the morning, I applied for a job with them. Um, sort of, yeah, it was one of those sort of off the cuff. I got back in, thought this was wicked, I want to work for them. And then a couple of months later, sort of got an email. It's like, oh, do you want to come and sort of meet the team? Um, come to sort of an open day and we'll sort of have a chat. So they scheduled in this meeting. Um, I went out the night before, woke up at nine o'clock on sort of the next morning. I was like, I don't really know whether I want to go to it. Um, but turns out, and I did kind of did go to it and that was sort of where everything started for me sort of i went in as just selling t-shirts for this bar crawl uh first event i did kind of smashed the national sales record kind of sold personally i sold like 600 700 odd t-shirts which oh, yeah. you know normally it takes a few staff members to do that um and off the back of that i was kind of offered more of a coordinator role with the business for the summer event that we did so that one went past and then we came to freshers uh, beat my own sales record again and then was offered like the full city manager role and then from there it kind of just kept growing and growing and growing I ended up looking after loads of different cities sort of oversaw sort of the nights in it was Brighton Portsmouth Southampton sort of all over the south and then it came to 2010 when I was going to graduate and it was kind of there was two paths for me it was either do I go straight and use my degree and mm. sort of go down the law route, uh, go and sort of qualify as a solicitor, or do I take a bit of a punt and take a year out? So one of my friends said to me, he was like, look, let's set something up or, you know, let's go and run a night and see how it goes. So I was like, okay, well, you know, I'll take that punt, you know, it's worth taking risks in life. So I did, and that was 2010. I ran my first night, which was Friday night at W Bar in Brighton, which is now Walkabout. Uh, and it's kind of just escalated from there, really. And nine years later, and I'm still here. <laughs> it's, an, it's, an amazing, it's an interesting journey, because yeah. as someone who's gone out there, they're experienced it, you've seen the niche, you thought, right, I could do this myself, and then you've decided to put those mm. on. And everyone that sort of works for the business or works with the business, those that are in senior positions have come from starting out kind of just flyering or doing guest listing or what have you know we're really passionate about believing those that get to the top yeah. all come from within everyone's kind of trained from from the bottom up and you know we've seen some people that you know they've grown amazingly well over their sort of the progression with the business you know we've also seen people that have grown really well and then they've left because mm -hmm. you know they've graduated from uni or they've gone on to other paths but you know we do then see people come back as well you know for me it's the team is really key with regards to the nights that you put on, it's, it's predominantly focused on students. Is there a different type of pressure than it would be putting on a, an average night? Or not an average night, but say a, a, night, a night in a nightclub that isn't necessarily geared towards students. 
is there a different sort of pressure that comes with that to make sure you perform because of the the word of mouth is so important within that community? Yeah, I mean, not really. I mean, for us, we don't just predominantly focus on students. You know, these days, if you want to focus on students, you've probably got a business for 30 odd weeks of the year. So for us, it's about, you know, how can you operate 52 weeks a year and ensuring that you've got multiple demographics to be able to target, not just having the students that are going to university, but also the returning students that are at local colleges. Yeah. You know, the older, gen slightly older generations as well, you know, the 25 plus, the stag and hen groups. So yeah, it's not just about focusing on students, sort of it's, it's the wider market all around. What would you say the differences are then in the last couple of years that you've noticed where people are kind of going out, maybe spending less or even spending mm -hmm. more in some instances? Is, has there been a bit of a shift pattern in, in people's spending behaviours? Yeah, I think it's kind of, it's, you know, it's natural. You know, every, there's different trends all, all the time sort of thing. So, you know, the past couple of years with, you know, with university fees, when that went up to £9,000, you did see a slight dip in sort of the student numbers going to different towns around the UK. You know, it's, it's expensive. You're coming sure. out with such huge debt at the end. You know, it's, you get a lot of people who think, is this really worth it? And I suppose also in this sort of day and age, having a degree isn't always necessary to get such a high end job or to get sort of the job you want. Mm. You know, there can be jobs that you're really passionate about, but you don't actually need a degree for. And all they're looking for is experience. So, you know, we have seen sort of a shift in the pattern of going out, you know, whereas people before would be going out five, six, seven times a week, you know, they might be going out now twice a week or, you know, if they're locals, they might be going out once or twice a month at a max. So for us, it's about how can you hit additional demographics to then sort of keep your numbers at a consistent level across the board. And then how would you kind of tap into that demographic? Is it, do you do a lot of push through social channels? Is that your kind of main form of advertising and promoting? Or do you prefer more sort of traditional methods as well? Both. You can't oh. rely. You can't rely on one. Um, you know, physical promo is still just as important as the social. You know, if you, you know, people that understand social have you know that with Facebook algorithms are changing all the time. You know, the sort of the policies that are implementing are changing all the time, and Facebook like to make it as difficult as possible for you. So, you know, whereas seven years ago, eight years ago. Although Facebook was in its infancy, mm. you know, you could put an event up on Facebook, invite people to it, everyone would click attending and everyone would rock up. Yeah. You know, these days it's not like that anymore. So you've got to be able to hit loads of different avenues of promotion and not just rely on one, because if you rely on one, it's not going to work. How do you kind of keep on top of that then? Do you, is that something you take hold of yourself or do you have people kind of a little bit younger than yourself that can kind of keep on top of those things? Bit trends? of both, bit yeah. of both. So we keep on top of everything in-house personally, you know, I look after a lot personally as well. I always like to keep my finger on top of what's happening. You now, ever since I kind of got into the industry, I've always been one that likes to try and be on top of everything when it comes to socials, whether that be Facebook, whether that be Instagram, Twitter, what have you, you know, we kind of know what's happening and what's going to happen. And then we can try and combat the issues that may sort of arise from there. But then on the flip side, we do have a much younger team who, they do a lot of the more personal and sort of, you know, face-to-face -face sort of promotion on, on Facebook and via social channels as well. Okay. And in terms of kind of challenges that you sort of face at the moment, what would you say a kind of typical, I suppose, spanner in the works kind of throw at you? What would that look like? I guess it probably is the sort of the number of people going out. Obviously, you're seeing the slight decline in it. It is sort of trying to ensure that you're staying consistent yeah. but also you know it's trying to ensure that there's still return on investment for the customer that is coming out something mm -hmm. that we're really passionate about in all the events that we run is ensuring that there is always that ROI for the customer you know you'll see a lot of events run or you know nights run that it's a case of throw open the doors and that's it kind of thing but what does the customer get out of it you've mm -hmm. got to think long term and not short term. It's all about longevity in this game for us anyway. Um, and I guess that's kind of why we're still here nine, 10 years down the line. What have been some of the, kind of your biggest sort of wins within the last kind of few years then in terms of you've put on a night yeah. and you've just gone, wow, you've just sat back and gone, this is absolutely smashed it. As that kind of formula then, if you look to repeat that, repeated that formula over the years? I think, you can't always repeat the same formula because with things, you know, with the market changing, with sort of social changing and with people, you know, the going out patterns changing, 
something that you would have done maybe two years ago, you can't mimic now. You know, events that we put on three, four years ago may not work now because, you know, that was what people wanted then and it's mm. not what, what people want now. So for us, it's, you know, looking as a whole at sort of what the market wants, but also where the market's going. Right. So you see a lot of people that will always be like, oh, you know, we've got to stay on top of our competition, which I agree, you know, you do have to stay on top of your competition, but it's not just about that. It's also staying on top of the market as well. Yeah. You know, you can go and see a competitor goes and books a PA, for example, which is great, you know, great PA or what have you, but realistically, is that what the market's going to react to? Because booking a PA is all well and good, but it's not guaranteeing that people are going to rock up. Is that different area to area? Have you noticed that maybe what works in Brighton doesn't necessarily work somewhere else? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So something that could work in yeah in, in Brighton definitely wouldn't work, for example, in Canterbury or something like that. It is very city specific, town specific. Okay. You know, there's some cities that are really forward thinking with the sort of the music industry. You know, Brighton is a, is a great example of that. You know, there's loads of fantastic sort of music led venues, music led events. Uh, you get a lot of big artists sort of playing Brighton as well. But something like that, if you put in maybe a smaller town or sort of a rural town, you might not necessarily get the same response. Has that happened? I think a good example, probably, probably in Eastbourne, to be fair. You know, we were, used to run club nights in, in Eastbourne on a weekly basis and something that would work here wouldn't necessarily work there. Cause, you know, I think that was, that was quite student heavy, um, but it is kind of, you really do have to look into what each city wants. I said, it's all about staying on top of the market yeah. and not necessarily putting all your focus on what your competitors are doing. Sure. Well, we, this is, you had a massive night once here, if I, uh, I recall, at Brighton Pier. That must have taken a lot of logistics to get that right. Talk me through the process of trying to get a venue, oh, sorry, not get a venue, get an event put on there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that must have been challenging as well as rewarding. Yeah, so that kind of all came about because we work officially with the University of Brighton Students' Union. Uh, it's something we've done since 2013. So we've put together and work with them on curating their entire official Freshers programme. Right. And every year we run a huge Halloween event, which originally started as a bar crawl, which was a multi sort of a multi-venue bar crawl. It then kind of grew into not necessarily a bar crawl because that sort of era was dying a little bit and moving into more of an access all areas block party. And then last year, we were sort of looking at the peer party side of things because obviously Brighton Pier is a fantastic sort of iconic venue, especially yeah. if you're new to the city and you haven't been here before. And we're like, how can we sort of one up ourselves and how can we stay ahead of the game um, instead of sort of waiting for sort of things to dip a little bit? So we looked at the pier and we thought that would be fantastic for Halloween. You know, it might be cold, but it's sort of already has that sort of eerie effect. It's dark, it's cool. So that was something we dropped into our Freshers programme last year. Um, to be fair, it was quite easy to operate. It was quite easy, really? it was quite easy to put together. I think mainly because you've already got the infrastructure there. Yeah. So it's not like where you're doing a festival where you're having to do your own site build, you're having to do the stage and you're having to do the bars, you're having to put everything together. Because it's the pier, the infrastructure was already there. Sure. So we knew what we had and we knew what we had to work with and we weren't really putting any temporary structures up. So it, for us, it was a case of, one, how can we make the event great for the student? Um, and two, sell it out, um, of which we did both, I think. So it worked really well. How did it, that kind of pitch then come to Brighton Pier? Did you have to sort of contact them separately and did you get any sort of pushback or did they just say, right, if you can meet X, Y, Z regulation, then mm -hmm. yeah, you've got it. Yeah, no, I mean, the original sort of side of the plan was, it was looking at a freshers pier party because, you know, it's, would, would it work in Freshers for Brighton? And we thought we've already got a great Freshers program and a lineup of events. How can we really differentiate ourselves? So it was kind of a, a no brainer for both parties really. And both were really interested in doing it. So it wasn't, wouldn't really say it was a pitch per se. It was kind of, we sort of wanted the day and it kind of just kind of happened. Will that, will that be a regular fixture in your kind of program with the student union? Yes. Yeah, so we're doing it again this year. Okay. So peer party will be happening again this year. Cool. It will be as a bolt on to the Freshers wristband this year. Um, but as part of the Halloween wristband, you get access, to, free access to all the rides. So all the rides are free all night. There's sort of discounted food as well from the food stands. 
and then there's a load of after parties as well. So you've got that focus on having the entertainment, early doors, you know, a lot, there are people out there that aren't interested in going out. You know, I completely get that. You know, I'd be lying if I said every single person would, you know, wants to go out every night of the week. So for us, our, the Halloween event is about sort of curating something that has that focus on being able to appeal to everyone but having the avenue later on that if you do want to go out, you can go out. Yeah. So, yeah, it's something that's going in this year and it looks like it's, you know, it's sort of bigger than it was last year. What kind of elements then do you look at to put on a successful night? Mm -hmm. What is the kind of key ingredients? I mean, do you create ideas together as a team or is it very much, I suppose, yeah, because you, you love working within your team. So I suppose is it a case of who can bring what to the table and then yeah, so go from there. when it comes to sort of specific nights, obviously we get a lot of venues that will approach us and go, are you interested in doing a night? Are you up for doing X, Y, and Z? You know, it's some of the conversation that we have within the team, whether we think it's something that we, you know, would would work for or work with. You know, for us, if we don't believe 110% in something and know that we're going to do 100%, 10% amount of work, it's not something that we take. You know, there's a lot of people that will go, right, we're going to run every single night under the sun yeah. um, and just try and hope it works. That's not what we, you know, that's not what we do. I, you know, I'll be open about it. it is what we've done before. You know, we have tried that sort of that aspect before and it doesn't work. So, you know, for us, it's about chatting to the team and going, look, these are the ideas that have come to the table or if they've got ideas, they then bring them to the table. Yeah. You know, make an assessment of whether we think it's something that would work. Does that particular night have a USP? If not, why are we doing it? Because yeah. if it's just going to be your sort of generic night, then really why you know what what's the point sort of thing so you know it's got to be well branded it's got to have that really good usp to it but it's also got to have that element to be able to grow because you know if it's not if that night's not going to be running in six months time what why it? what's the point you know what as i said it? earlier for us and for you know the business as a whole longevity is one of the most important things you know it's all about sort of that long-term thinking and not being small-minded so with that then what, what are the kind of next five years of the evolution of husky guys yeah so i mean for us there's a lot of movement more into the music scene as well so there's a lot more music-led shows which will be you know coming up over the next six to twelve months um is that dj specific or did you mean uh, actual billing of type of music in terms of genre uh, a bit of both, really. Okay. Yeah, a bit of both. So a lot of sort of DJ headliner specific events over sort of as I said over the next six to twelve months. Um, you know, we've seen a, quite a big internal change as well. Seeing how we can, you know, re sort of restructure the business to make it even more efficient. Something we do every year. You know, you'll see a lot of people that will just think things are working and they'll just sit back and go, okay, well, we'll just carry on plodding along right. as we are. Um, for us, we always like to try and stay that one step ahead and going okay it might be working now but can we foresee that working in another two years if not what can we do now to combat that to then keep going further um, so for us it's kind of just continuing to grow sort of the business as it is um, we've got a lot of obviously additional events additional brands involved um, so yeah it's kind of where, where we're at really has there been any kind of not necessarily astronomical failures but have there been events where you guys have sort of put on and just gone ah yeah, this isn't work, but it has <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, there has. Yeah, you'd probably get a few people that sit here and probably say no. That's what I mean. That, we like yeah. we like to talk about the, the kind of failures here because the way I see it, you only learn from your mistakes. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. You know. Also, you know, there's times in the past where we've rushed into things as well. You know, these days I don't like to rush into nights. You don't like to rush into events because, as much as you know, the outsider might sit there and go oh, it's a case of turning up and running an event on the night and then going home. It really isn't. There's so much in the planning stage and what have you. When it comes to anything new, we really do like that sort of four to six week lead time on it. So I think there are other nights in the past where we've probably rushed into launching things and we've kind of done it off the back of a week or two's work and it didn't work. But again, it's all a learning curve. Yeah. Um, and though if we hadn't have made those failures, then we wouldn't have really known how we could have learned from them. Has that, have any of the failures kind of materialized into the next one being a lot more stronger and positive then in terms of like the bounce back, bounce back ability? Yeah, uh, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I think it's kind of, you see what hasn't worked 
and then you go, okay, well, that hasn't worked, but how can I learn from that? And then how can I grow sort of the next project into something that's a lot better than that? Yeah. You know, we, we've seen it with weeklies that, you know, are still in operation sort of thing. You know, there's certain elements that may not have worked in the past. But we may have been a bit slow to then react to them. So it's then looking, oh, actually, we need to be a bit more proactive. I think that was kind of, for me, it was a lot when, when I was a lot younger. I was probably, obviously, I'm still real, really passionate about the business. When I was younger, I think I'd probably say I'd probably rush into things a little bit more. And if things were working, I'd just be like, oh, great, they're working. But Smashed it. I didn't actually, I wasn't actually planning six to 12 months in advance where, you know, well, now, we're thinking, well, great, this is working, this is working, this needs a little tweak, you know, this needs a little tweak. We now need to look six months down the line to, is that still gonna work? Or sort of, what do we think the trends are gonna be those six to 12 months down the line? In terms of growth, mm -hmm. is there room for sort of expansion UK wide? I mean every single town and city in the UK or sort of even overseas? Yeah, I mean, expansion for us is something we've done and scaled back on multiple times over the past right. nine years. I mean, we've done, you know, we've done it where we've had three, four, five different cities. And then, you know, we've thought, hang on a minute, maybe our focus is slipping in certain areas that we need to sort of Does that, does that come back again. and bite you quite quickly then? <sighs> it can do. Um, but I guess it's just a case of analysing it really and working out or just trying to be trying to be a realist, I mm. think. You know, there's kind of there's times where we've gone, hang on, I think we are doing a little bit too much. You know, I think that was probably a case in maybe two thousand and twelve, two thousand eleven, two thousand and twelve. Obviously it was quite new to the sort of the business was new. It was only sort of a year, two years old and we were growing massively, you know, we were operating in multiple cities and it was just from a personal aspect, it was just crippling me. You know, it was from really? a physical and mental side. It, it, you know, it was tough right. because you were trying to do probably too much for what I was capable. You know, not not necessarily capable. What I was trying to do, stretch too much. Too, yeah, yeah. stretch myself too thin. Because back then, I liked to do everything myself, and you As know, I still I still like to do everything myself. <laughs> yeah, but it was kind of I didn't. There was there was elements of the business that I really didn't want anyone else to touch or you know I kind of I probably at that like time I pro probably at that time I thought I was probably the best at everything which yeah when you know we sort of when you look back you're like well you're not you know and that's sort of with, with my team now and you know the team that are with us everyone has their strengths you know I'm not going to sit here and go I'm the best because you know that, that just wouldn't be true you know as I said you are really only as strong as your team and you know we have got some fantastic people that work with us and they've all got their own strengths you know whether that be you know the physical sort of promo side of things whether it be social whether it's you know whether it be operations yeah you know all, when you bring it all together that's sort of that's what makes the the success side of things definitely i think as well when you start off early on as you say you want to make sure you oversee everything and you know you, you because it is your baby you've got a vision yeah. of how it's meant to be so that's how you want it mm. and if anyone comes in they're wrong because their yeah. way is not your way and yeah. yeah and at the end of the day it becomes you know as you get older as you become more experienced as you kind of release that you, know, you have a bit more humility towards it and you kind of take your ego out of it yeah that's when you kind of sit back and go well actually I can focus on this bit because this person is just as good at doing this no, yeah 100% just I think it's I think to be honest and I'm you know I wouldn't change a thing in the way it's gone because it makes you grow as a person. As a person. You know, I'm sort of, I know what my strengths are. I know what my team's strengths are. Yeah. You know, but I'm a completely different person now to what I was nine years ago. Of course. Completely different person now to what I was like 15 years ago. So I think for me, that learning curve has been so important. You know, I've learned that there are people within the team that, you know, you are, that you are fantastic at what you do why should I try and interrupt that really sort of yeah. thing, you know, and focus on the day-to-day -day running of the business. You guys have been operating for quite a long time. Yes. Um, arguably, we are in a, a massive boom economy at the mm -hmm. moment. Um, how would you kind of say where the nightlife is at the moment? Is it healthy? Is there going to be a decline? Or is there going to be, is it just going to get better from where you're sitting? I think 
we've sort of seen a bit of a you know there's a bit of a pattern over the over the past few years you know there there, there are peaks and troughs in this industry there always are um you sort of you see a lot less people going out over the i'd say over the past maybe a six sort of six to twelve months yeah probably you know in certain cities i'd say there definitely isn't a boom um i don't think you know over the summer as well you know specifically you don't you know you don't have your students you might have your returners but everyone's going off on holiday um you know the market itself obviously with you know we've got new students coming in sort of september october you know that's massive for massive for everyone you know but it's you need to ensure that the planning's planning's done right to ensure as a business that you can harness that but also showcase what you can do yeah um I think the actual industry itself, though, there seems to be a lot more focus on sort of the one-off side of events. You know, the weeklies are great. Weeklies, you know, you still get your regular customers, you still get your out-of-towners. Uh, you know, they're sort of being a bit more conservative, I'd say, with their money. Yeah. Um, we're also seeing a massive trend in people going to bars. You know, cocktails are a lot cooler these days mm -hmm. than they ever have been. But again, I think that's because they're a lot more affordable. You know, those sort of cocktail, those, those cool cocktail bars, those, those chains as well, which are really successful. And the sort of 18 to 21 year olds are really sort of harnessing that and getting involved. So how, how do you try and ply someone away then from or pry someone away from that and say, no, don't go to there, come to our event instead? Yeah, I think it's all about experience. It's all about, you know, the experience that you give the customer. You know, a person can go to a cocktail bar and they're not going to have the same experience as sort of a nightclub or, you know, a really good mm. sort of student-led event that's either content-led, entertainment-led or what have you. But I think from a business perspective, it's all about investment as well. You know, for us, we're continually investing in our brands. We're continually investing in the business to ensure that we really do keep on top of the market, we keep on top of what everyone else is doing as well. Um, but also, and most importantly, that our customers have a great time. You know, customers are the number one, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, because if you don't give them a great experience and, you know, they're not getting a return on their investment, then they're not going to come back. So for us, being able to then see them sort of coming back on a regular basis, it's just satisfying, you know, and seeing them have a fantastic time as well. That, it's that, uh, quite that is, rewarding. And that's the idea of it. I mean, you so you've been here in the industry a long time just start yeah. to wrap up what's the most fulfilling part of this of this job of this role of customer, this career customer satisfaction customer satisfaction 100 percent. there is nothing better than putting on an event and seeing everyone having the time of their lives you know i think for me it is seeing them having that amazing time on the night but then following up from that you know later down the line or the next day or two days later them smashing out photos on instagram putting out photos on their facebook or what have you sort of saying how such a good night they had i think that's probably that's probably the most rewarding thing is that how you sort of rely i suppose on people the word of mouth now it's tagging you guys in the, the photos tagging you guys in the in the videos a uh, bit of both is that really. how the brand kind of grows beyond your marketing team directly bit of, bit of both really obviously it's in it's important to stay on top of the marketing side of things but yeah i mean the sort of the word of mouth is is key, but then I guess it's key in any industry. You know, reputation's important. If you haven't got a rep, good reputation or, you know, you don't put on a good show for your customers, then you're not going to see the return from them. So, yeah, I'd agree with that one. So I'm going to have to edit this bit because I just got some ice. <laughs> and I don't want to spit because it just looks weird on camera, so I'm going to have to... There we go, that's good. It went really cold when we were trying to cheat the ice. Right. Cool, and we're back. Cool. So, customer satisfaction. You come from a very background yourself, personally. Yep. You've obviously got a law degree, but you love working in the nightlife industry. Yes. And there's no, you're not becoming a lawyer anytime soon. No time soon. No. Okay. I'll just to be honest, you know, after having been to uni and spent three years there back, you know, when I started in 2007, you know, I think I had a bit of a warped perception of what it was going to be like. I was kind of thought it was all what, going law to be or being a law. Right. You know, so did you think it was going to be like suits and you were just going to like run around? And, probably a yeah, little bit. Yeah. But then again, I was a naive 18 year old that probably didn't really know any better. But then again, I guess it also came down to the way that certain elements were taught as well. You know, there was certain aspects of it that weren't taught great. Um, there were other elements that were taught amazingly well. And I just think the whole thing, I got to my third year and I was like, I'm just drained. I just need a year just to go and do something for myself, go and, you know, take a bit of a risk. I've never re never been a real big risk taker ever. Um, just go and do something that, you know, could actually 
have potential. And then, yeah, that was 2010, we're now in 2019, and I'm still here, so. Well, look, listen, I really appreciate you taking the time yeah, out no to see worries. me today. Thank you for coming on, Ollie. Cool, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.